And what you see next to me is a beaded bandolier bag. This is um, kind of what I'm known for. Among all the other things that I do, this seems to be the one that everybody is the most fascinated and interested in. I, I know why, because I am myself. Uh, for us, the bandolier bags um, have served many different purposes over the years. Um, as you can see, there are beads on it, although I don't know if you can see, but there are beads on them. They're glass seed beads. I also have at the bottom, you notice there's a different kind of bead. Those are Russian beads. They come in white, black, green, blue, and amber. They were individually made. They were made by people who blew glass and stuff like that. And if you're ever interested in that kind of history, uh, most of them were made off the coast of Italy on this little island that made them. And they stopped making them, I want to say, in the 1930s. In the middle of the swamp, a gentleman, last name is Brown, opened Brown's Trading Post. And so that's where you could buy all the stuff to make these bags. But when I'm trying to make a bag, I make it to the standards that my ancestors made them to. They would have traded their deer hides, alligator skins, uh, wild oranges, fruit, all that sort of stuff um, for all of these types of materials. The beads, the needles, the thread, uh, the fabrics, the cloth, the seed beads, all that kind of stuff. And then unfortunately for us, somewhere around 1860, 1870, is the last time that we see these being made by Seminole people. Now you jump forward to myself and another lady named Carol Cypress, and we have revived this within our tribe. In 1997, I became the um, operations manager for my tribe's museum, the Athotiki Museum. And the director of the museum, his name was Billy Cypress. He's passed on now. And he said, hey, do you make bandolier bags? Because I'd like to have a bandolier bag made. And I said, um, I've never made one. I know what you're talking about. I've seen pictures. I said, but if I can see them in person, I can figure out how it was made and I can make you one. And so in the Yathatagi Museum's collection at that time, I think we had three or four bags. And so he brought them out and he said, here they are, learn. <laughs> and so I looked at them and I looked at them for about a week. I would go in every day and look at them, make notes, all kinds of stuff. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna try to make one. And the first bag I made was pretty simple. And I mean, for me, it was really simple. Nowadays, I make a bag, it takes anywhere from six months to two years. And it depends on how many beads, if it's a fully beaded bag like this. This bag took a year. Um, a bag that is now in the Atatagi Museum's collection, I made with micro beads. Micro beads, to give you an idea of how big they are, you could probably fit around 100 of them on the, on the head of a dime. Yeah, it's a lot of beads. And so it took just over two years to make that bag. And when I take a commission, I don't take any money from them because I know there can be delays. Because if people die in my tribe, I can't work on these bags because there are rules that go along with making these bags, traditionally speaking. And so I try to abide by all those rules and, and guidelines that were given to me. And one of those is when somebody passes away, I can't do this thing and I have to uh, abide by the mourning. So I have to mourn for my four days and that sort of thing. And so there, there are stoppages I have to do if I'm working on these bags and they can cause delays in which will be that year and a half will then turn closer to two years sometimes. The rules about the bags, some of them I can share with you like I just did and some of them I cannot share with you. Um, some of the rules about the bags, like when I'm making a bag, I can't eat when I'm making a bag. I can't snack when I'm making a bag. I have to completely stop, eat, then I can come back to it because your heart needs to be pure while you're working on this. Your body needs to be pure while you're working on this. So you can drink all the water or drinks you want, but you can't eat because the food moves around in your body, manipulating your body, you know? And so you can't be manipulated, I guess, while you're working on these things. So that's one of those rules, as well as the, the shape and size of them. So when I'm making for people, they always ask, why are you measuring my hand? Because it has to do with making the bag. Well, I want the strap, this one, nope. If you want me to make it, the strap's gonna be as wide as your hand. It needs to be in proportion to your body. And so your hands and feet, you know, if you put your hand like this, it's the same width as your foot. So I could measure their feet too, I guess. Um, so there are all these kind of rules. Now the rules about who can wear them, anybody can wear them, men or women. Um, can you give them away to people? Yes. Whoever the owner of the bag is, they can pass that bag on. But if they pass on without giving that bag to somebody, 
nobody should really wear that bag because it wasn't given to anybody. And now you're taking something that belonged to somebody else. So it's like you're stealing it. And so that's one of those rules that I can share with you today. And I think my time is up, so I thank all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>